Australia has a great wealth of knowledge uh, and experience in dealing with water security through thick and thin and hard times, as we know, because it is a very water challenged um, uh, continent. Um, so Australian entities have again gained all that years of experience of managing water, living with water, uh, which we want to harness um, and bring to our region in Asia Pacific, um, who are dealing with similar challenges at this point. So there is a wealth that has uh, yet to be harnessed and we would like to do more of that with the partnership with Australian uh, water entities. AWP has a great network of, again, water utilities, water basin uh, managers, river basin managers, um, similar experiences that they have um, gained in different international projects, different domestic context. Um, so we uh, just, it, for us, it's one-stop shop if we come to AWP. Uh, where they can say, yep, we can do this with that sort of challenge. Yes, we have strength in this water partner. Um, so instead of us having to find who the right partners are, uh, yeah, one stop shop is what I would say. We can't be resilient without being inclusive. It is just not two aspects, it's embedded in one. Just as we, we have to uh, continue working on sustainability. Um, um, so bringing inclusive practices into your water entity, whether it's a water utility or irrigation managers or river basin managers, is reaching your climate resilience target. And, and also not just climate, being resilient to any other shocks and stresses. So we see that going hand in hand um, and we are working in multiple projects in trying to bring more inclusive practices, um, more inclusive target setting baseline on what inclusion means. On youth, um, water sector uh, traditionally is just run by old men. Uh, whether it's client side in, in leaders or policy makers or consultants designing the projects or contractors building these projects, it's been traditionally just a lot of, um, you know, one generation, not, not even youth coming in. Youth are slowly coming in, but they're not being given leadership positions in any of these, what we call triple C nexus. So we want to break that, but we're looking at how do we do that uh, meaningfully without making it all tokenistic says yes we need more youth and let's get youth to network but really meaningfully what are the processes in the planning in the service design of of, of utilities or the entities and delivery of services that it becomes beyond just networking and leadership building of youth This series of them we do um, in project, at project level, we do extremely well. Uh, we have 100% of our water sector projects gender mainstream. 96% last year were at the higher category of gender mainstreaming, what we call gender equity theme or gender um, uh, effective gender mainstreaming theme. Um, and it's even at the completion of our project, we go back and rate how we fared. And there are multiple uh, examples. One in Nepal, you know, where we work with small towns and municipalities. We've been doing that for 20 years. Uh, we have multiple financing, um, either grants or loans going into supporting more than 130 small towns. And there we have managed to change the planning process, change the local laws, where in, in forming the water user committee, who are the um, like operators of these systems, uh, the government now seeks 30% of representation of women, one being in leadership position. And that's been completely mainstreamed into the local um, 
uh, not just ATP projects, any project development, any program development in the sector. So these sort of practices where we've gone beyond just project delivery in the planning, as you form, before you even come for project proposal, you would have to show that you've got inclusive practices built in and how you would service that going forward. So this is one good example of uh, putting it into from beyond project onto the policies and, and sustaining it into the governance structures for, for the long run.